Uh, hi everyone, and thank you for uh, choosing this talk and uh, watching our presentation. Uh, I hope you are all in good health and uh, the coronavirus pandemic uh, will soon be over. Also, I want to thank uh, the Aero Space Village team um, for uh, allowing us to present our research. Uh, my name is Mohamed Reza Zamidi. I'm a cybersecurity researcher. I'm mostly interested in uh, cyber physical systems and uh, industrial control systems. Uh, my other two colleagues are uh, Reza, which is a reverse engineer, and Javad, uh, who is working as a resume. So if you are thinking uh, why we are three person uh, in a 25 minute talk. Um, minute talk. And uh, I should say that um, it was the most time consuming research we ever had uh, because uh, we had to uh, make contact with people in uh, aviation industry. And uh, it wasn't easy to find them. And uh, finally just, uh, Flight engineer uh, answered to our questions, and thanks to him, uh, we have a picture of our work on a real uh, flight management system. Okay, uh, this talk is divided into uh, six um, main sections. First of all, uh, I will talk about our recent cyber attacks against the aviation industry. Also some uh, basic stuff about avionics systems and how uh, these new technologies um, can turn an airplane into a target for a uh, cyber attack. Uh, secondly, I will explain that um, what is a flight management system, um, which is one of the most important uh, avionic devices uh, that could be found in a modern aircraft. Um, after that, I will discuss uh, some risk scenarios against flight management systems and how we can see it from an uh, offensive uh, perspective. Uh, then I will explain the process of analyzing an FMS uh, data integrity check mechanism and how we find uh, found a weakness that allowed us to bypass it. And finally, we have a demo, which is uh, uh, about uh, bypassing CRC algorithm and uh, also uh, the malware. Okay, uh, here are some example of uh, recent cyber attacks against the aviation industry. Uh, the first one was a ransomware attack against uh, New York Airport. Um, second, uh, the same kind of attack uh, against Albany Airport uh, one year er earlier. And uh, also on 2019, uh, Ravin, uh, Ravin Air Group uh, declared that uh, it had uh, experienced a malicious uh, cyber attack uh, on the company's IT network. Uh, the day before, uh, causing it to cancel all its flights. And in 2018, a ransomware attack turned off the electronic um, flight information screens at uh, Bristol Airport. So these are uh, only some examples, and we want to show that uh, instead of common malware attacks, and especially designed malware, which is able to target the avionic systems uh, will be more challenging. Okay, uh, what is avionic systems? Uh, a literal blend of the terms aviation and electronics. Uh, avionics is a category of electronic, electronic systems and equipment uh, especially designed for use in aviation. The aviation installed in a in an aircraft or a spacecraft can include uh, engine control, uh, flight control system, navigation, communication, flight recorders, uh, lighting systems, uh, 
performance monitor and system that carry out um, hundreds of other mission and uh, flight management tasks. Every modern aircraft, spacecraft, and artificial satellite uh, uses electronic system of varying types to perform a range of uh, functions uh, par uh, pertinent to their uh, purpose and mission. Uh, a flight management system is a fundamental component of a modern airliner avionics. Uh, in many ways, it is like uh, the GPS in your car uh, with waypoints programmed uh, in between the origin and the destination. Uh, you program in where you are going and off it goes. A primary function in, is in flight management of the flight plan. Uh, using various sensors to deter determine the aircraft position. Uh, the FMS can guide the aircraft along with the flight plan. Uh, the FMS will allow the airplane to hook up their autopilot and maintain uh, the heading uh, within a few seconds. Okay, uh, typical flight management systems uh, consist of a flight management computer and control display unit, which enable uh, display and modification of uh, various parameters, as well as allowing the flight crew to select the various uh, FMS operation modes. And also, uh, uh, a data loader uh, is one of its uh, important uh, components. Uh, the flight management computer uh, is the heart of a flight management uh, system providing centralized uh, control for navigation and performance management. The FMC accepts uh, information from uh, numerous uh, navigation sensors, uh, including VOR, distance uh, measuring equipment, and GPS. Data from uh, each sensor is uh, prioritized based on its known percentage of error and can be blended uh, to provide the most accurate uh, position information. The flight management computer has a programmable uh, database containing um, known radio navigation uh, stations, along with their uh, tunable frequencies, A4, seats, and stars, as well as approach data for uh, runway. Uh, because of frequent changes, uh, the database requires updating every 28 uh, minutes days. This is accomplished by loading electronic media files into some type of data loader, which can vary from a floppy driver or even a compact disk. In some cases, the data loader can be used to download diagnostics or FOD data um, to the same type of electronic media. Uh, the flight plan is generally determined on, on the ground before departure, either by the pilot for a smaller aircraft or a professional dispatcher for an airliner. It is uh, inserted into the FMS either by typing it, uh, selecting it from a saved library or a common routes, or via an ACARS data link. Uh, with the airline dispatch center. Um, all FMSs uh, contain a navigation database. And the navigation database uh, contains the elements from which the flight plan is constructed. Uh, these are defined via the ARINC 424 standard. The navigation database is normally updated every 28 days and uh, to ensure that its uh, contents are current. Each FMS contains only a subset of the IR, ARINC data relevant to the capabilities of the FMS. The NDB um, contains all of the information required for building a flight plan, consisting of uh, 
waypoints, uh, airways, airports, and runways. And also a standard instrument with departure and terminal arrival, which in summary we call them seed and stars, that are procedures and checkpoints used to enter and leave the airways, airway system by aircraft operation on the IFR flight plan. Okay, the airliners, uh, airlines have to download NDV updates from the website of FMS vendors. Then they will ex uh, extract uh, this NDV files using the specific software and then will copy them into a floppy disk. After that, the technician uh, will upload NDV files via the data loader uh, to the FMC. The interesting point for us is that the FMC device has the capability of um, data integrity check and only accept NDV files which are not manipulated. Otherwise, the technician will face an error at the time of loading the NDV file. Um, okay, so from an offensive standpoint, one of the most likely attack vectors is to manipulate the NDV file, which are willing to be loaded on the FMS device. So the attacker will only need to bypass the data integrity check mechanism, and after that, uh, we'll be able to manipulate some uh, information which uh, are critical uh, for flight. Um, data integrity refers to the accuracy and consistency of data over its life cycle. Maintaining uh, data integrity is a core uh, focus of uh, many enterprise security solutions. Data integrity can be uh, compromised in several ways. Each time data is replicated or transferred, it should remain in intact and unaltered between updates. Error checking methods and validation procedures are typically relied on to ensure the integrity of data that is transferred or reproduced uh, without the intention of uh, alteration. CRC or cyclic redundancy check is an error detection code. It finds change in data as it travels from one computer to another by adding a code to the end of the data string. Um, the sending computer uh, creates the code and uh, the receiving computer check it. If the code check out, the data is accurate and if codes don't check out, the data is corrupt. Okay, so here is a real world example. Uh, at the left side, you can see the original message. Uh, Yes, uh, which um, is going to be transmitted. And at the center, we have a generator a polynomial or CRC generator, which is uh, for this. Uh, it's coming from uh, the algorithm. Uh, it can be uh, more bits based on the different uh, CRC algorithms. So uh, the point uh, here is that uh, we should add uh, one, uh, uh, one uh, bit less than its actual length uh, at the end of uh, our original message. Okay, so um, uh, we have to, uh, this um, original message should be divided by, um, our CRC generator. But the division of polynomials differs from the, an integer division. Um, the underlying uh, uh, uses an integer, uh, uses arithmetic for CRC calculation is based on the XOR operation. But I guess many of you have previous knowledge about it. It is very simple and uh, the resulting bit, let me. And uh, the resulting bit uh, evaluates to one if only exactly one of the bits is set. 
uh, otherwise when the number are the same the result will be zero okay so uh we will continue uh this uh operation till the end and finally we have here a checksum this value is called checksum we should add this to the end of uh, the original message and the data is ready for uh, transfer okay so at the right side uh, this is what will be happen at the receiver side uh, if you look uh, we started here uh, with some zeros and uh, reach it to the checksum so here the receiver will start uh, this checksum at the end of our message and it uh, must know the CRC generator. So uh, it is the reverse process of our uh, previous uh, uh, mathematic operation and it should uh, reach to the zero and this way we can ensure that data is not altered. Okay uh so uh how we can bypass uh the crc check process as you saw at the previous slide uh the mathematic uh, operation of crc calculation is not very complicated and is easy to analyze after finding the CRC algorithm, uh, we can implement the same thing on our side. Uh, the only step uh, which is challenging is uh, to understand the mathematic uh, operation by uh, reading the assembly code at the time of analyzing a CRC in a computer-based environment. Okay, after bypassing data integrity check, uh, it's time to complete the attack vector. If we ignore the um, infection process, the attacker only needs to look uh, for a specific NDB files and then manipulate critical data. In addition to common malware attacks uh, against the aviation industry, a malware that is especially designed to target avionic systems um, could be very challenging. Okay, uh, here is the whole kill chain scenario. We consume that the first step is done via common uh, attack methods like phishing. In the second step, uh, the malware uh, should be able to search the hard drive for the NDB files based on the specific NDB file format or file header. Then it's time for um, changing some data on the navigation database and bypass the file integrity check. At the fourth step of the, te uh, the technician will copy the manipulated NDB file on the floppy disk. Then he or she will update the FMC device uh, with this NDB file. Finally, the pilot will start flying with this altered NDB and will face some risk scenario. <clears throat> so what are risk scenarios? Frankly speaking, um, it is not very really clear that what will happen. But we know that uh, the data from FMS will be sent for uh, many other avionic systems. And this could make some mistakes and challenge for flight. Uh, also, we know that flying with a uh, manipulated FMS is not safe at all, uh, since many real life uh, incidents uh, originated from FMS data inputter. Okay, let's move on to our research on the data integrity check of Honeywell's flight management system. Honeywell is the biggest FMS manufacturer and it's products can be found on every modern aircraft. Okay, um, one nav tool is a desktop application which inter in interprets the binary data format used by Honeywell FMS. And by using this tool, we can see inside the navigation database. OneNav has a uh, wide cap capability to decode 
uh, various uh, formats of uh, navigation database uh, that's uh, produced by Honeywell. Uh, using one app, you can perform uh, compare, export, arch archive, and plot the NavDB contents and create loadable media for Honeywell FMS. So after some research, uh, we investigated the, that Honeywell is using a CRC algorithm for its uh, file integrity check. Uh, if we consider the one nav as the sender, the FMC will be the receiver. It is clear that both the sender and receiver should use the same CRC generator. By reverse engineering uh, the OneNav software, finally we managed to detect uh, the routine which is responsible for uh, calculating the CRC. Because of security concerns, I'm not uh, going to explain the details of this step. Okay, uh, let's see a demo of our work. Uh, this is OneNav and I'm going to use engineering mode of the software. Uh, so here uh, I'm opening a database and you can see the CRC is correct. Okay, uh, the first airport, uh, uh, we can uh, manipulate its, its data. For example, let's look at uh, its uh, uh, for, uh, this data is related to uh, its location and I will just copy it on notepad. Okay, um, we can uh, manipulate uh, this uh, NDB file with a hex editor. Uh, First, uh, we should uh, search for it. Okay, so just uh, a little bit change and uh, saving uh, as a new NDB file. Okay, uh, if we check for CRC, we can see that it's failed because the uh, NDB file is manipulated. And uh, this side will not uh, load on FMC device. Okay, so here is our program, uh, which is uh, uh, fixed uh, CRC, CRC check. Okay, so if we check this new file, we can see that uh, CRC is okay. And uh, back to production version and uh, we can check uh, the location of uh, the previous uh, airport. Let's see what's happened here. Okay, if you look carefully, uh, you can see that uh, the location is changing. Uh, this is just uh, an example of uh, uh, changing critical data. Uh, an attacker could uh, change many other data. So it was just for showing a, a demo, we use it uh, uh, the location of a lines, uh, a port, sorry. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, as I mentioned before, uh, this is not only a weakness in a computer software. If we can bypass the CRC algorithm in the one lab, 
it must be possible to do it on a real FM3 devices. Okay, thanks to our flight engineer friends, uh, we have a picture of loading our NDB file on a real FM3 devices. And the final part of this research is the malware, which is able to target NDB files and flight management system. It is uh, the automating of uh, the previous demo, but uh, using a malware. Okay, you can see the same airport here. I'm running the malware. Okay. So the file has has the same name, but I want to keep it uh, in the one lab. So I'm going, I'm going to rename it to show you what happened to uh, this file in contrast uh, to this uh, previous one. Okay, so I'm going to open the same um, airport and you can see our malware is working. Okay, uh, about one year ago, we reported uh, the vulnerability to the Honeywell PSIRT team. And uh, after some months, uh, they told us uh, that they have issued uh, mitigations and warned the customers. Okay, thank you guys for uh, watching this presentation till the end. I hope you find it useful and please let me know if you have any question or comment. Thank you again and have a good time.